Hi, my name is Hisham Zaini. This summer, I worked in the Soft Robotics and Bionics Lab with Professor Younglei Park and Professor Chris Atkinson. Uh, this summer, I designed and built a soft robot arm. We examined inflatable structures, we examined fabrics, we examined many different materials, uh, things that people haven't thought of to use in robots before. And I focused more on the lower parts of the arm, uh, the hand and wrist mechanism. Uh, I drew inspiration from the human body. Uh, so in the hand and the wrist, all of the muscles are down here. And between this point and this point, at least the ones that actuate the fingers, uh, there are tendons. So I kind of modeled my design off of that. Uh, I looked at really cheap materials that work surprisingly well, materials that haven't really been used in robots before. Uh, you know, soft robotics is such a new field that so little has been done in that it was great to be able to innovate at the conceptual level, develop concepts completely from scratch, try out approaches that have never been tried out before. Like in the past, you know, some of the structural elements that have been tested for soft robotics are uh, inflatable structures, rubber, fabric. Traditional robots aren't made out of these materials. Traditional robots are made out of aluminum and steel and you know, that, that's horrible for the applications that we're going for. We're trying to help out elderly people and handicapped people and mentally disabled people, neurologically disabled people. Uh, manufacturing robots that work in uh, car manufacturing plants. If one of these arms comes into contact with an employee, uh, that's very dangerous. You need something that's intrinsically compliant. So the approach that we took is to try to implement all these structures passively. We built the arm itself out of soft materials. You know, one, one approach uh, is to put padding around the arm, but padding only goes so far. So how much padding can you put on an arm? Can you make the entire arm out of padding? Can you make, and this is an approach that's been tested before, can you make an arm out of inflatable structures? That would be incredibly lightweight and that could deform indefinitely. Uh, so we explored ideas along those lines. Uh, I learned to work with new materials. I learned to work with fabrics. I learned to work with inflatable vessels. I built my own inflatable vessels and sewed my own fabrics. And this was a completely new experience for me. Tried many different approaches. Many of them didn't work. Some of them worked. And uh, eventually uh, just became comfortable with sewing that I was able to develop my own techniques. I knew some things about robotics coming into, the, coming into this program. Uh, in fact, the way I heard about this program was going through Professor Atkinson's research papers. We were building an, uh, an exoskeleton robot uh, to help paralyzed people walk. And uh, that project involved you know, learn, looking at different models of controlling legs, looking at different types of leg robots. And I looked through many of Professor Atkinson's papers. They were really good, and I found myself just I kept coming back to his personal web page again and again and again. And uh, it was nice to be able to work with him in person, to see the thinking process that goes on behind those types of publications. Uh, I, also, I also worked with Professor Park, Young Lay Park, and he was a wonderful, wonderful person to work with. Of uh, the graduate students that I was working with, in weekly lab meetings when we all get up and present and talk about our research, uh, and we ask them questions. And it's nice to be able to see the research at different stages as opposed to just the end product. You really see the thinking process that goes into it. Behind every success was like at least three or four failures. And that was inspiring. That was something I couldn't get from reading the PhD thesis alone. And uh, in these past two months, I made a couple prototypes that work. I also made a couple that didn't. And uh, I didn't get disheartened by it. I learned from it and just moved on and improved on the mistakes that I made.